stop asking for v6 engines all right so where are all these v6 engines that we used to have and v8 engines so in almost every video i do whether it's on a toyota highlander or a toyota forerunner or a toyota tundra tacoma there's always some type of comment that i read or see that has to do with uh the four cylinder powertrain revolution or the larger engines going away and smaller engines coming in to take their place, whether they're electrified, turbocharged or not. And you might realize that in the automotive world, whether it's Toyota or another brand, this is the new norm, but there's a reason for it guys. Here's why. It breaks down kind of into different categories around the world. There's the Euro European side of things, which do have their restriction. And then there's the American, North American, and Canadian side of things, which they have their own set of restrictions as well. Now, the United States has an EPA and CAFE standard, which is a corporate average fuel economy standard, which sets a minimum fuel efficiency level on new vehicles, which technically indirectly pushes for smaller engines to be produced. The larger the engine, typically the more nitrogen oxides or particle matter that engine will produce, especially when you're talking about diesel powertrains. So to bring all of these emissions and pollution down, manufacturers are constrained to produce smaller engines and in turn uh, have them become more fuel efficient while still maintaining power, which is why you're starting to see a lot of turbocharged engines be produced all around the automaker economy. For example, a 1.5 liter or a two liter turbocharged engine can deliver similar performance as a larger displacement engine and have better fuel economy. Many manufacturers like Toyota are using direct injection, variable valve timing, and hybridization to help and improve power output. By doing this, guys, it helps the automakers, specifically Toyota, meet emission targets and improve fuel efficiency, which is what everyone's asking for. A V6 or a V8 can only be so fuel efficient until you bring in the competition, which is a smaller engine. Now, in a trend where the fuel prices are going down year over year or month over month, I can see that this maybe wouldn't make the most sense for consumers, viewers, and customers. But for as far back as I can remember, the trend on fuel prices has only been going up and staying there. Right now, we pay an average of around uh, $1.30 a liter. So depending on what type of vehicle you're driving, whether it's a hybrid or not, a full tank of gas can cost you anywhere between 70 to $100. So the viewers and the customers are actually indirectly or directly asking for more fuel efficient vehicles where when you visit the gas tank, ones where you have to visit the gas station less frequently. Some countries and parts of the world also offer things like credits or tax incentives on more fuel efficient vehicles with smaller engines, which also helps drive the demand for smaller engines underneath the hood. And keep in mind guys, smaller engines, whether it's a V8 to a V6 or a V6 to a 2.5 liter four cylinder or two liter four cylinder also means less weight making the vehicle itself uh, a lot less heavy, which also helps for the feel of drive, acceleration, performance, power, and fuel efficiency. The reality here, guys, is you're going to see more and more of this as the years go on. You're going to see uh, smaller engines come into play. You're going to see more engines coming with turbochargers to help improve fuel efficiency and help deliver the torque or power that you're used to with the larger engines, and you're gonna see more hybridization. I mean, we're seeing it already with Toyota. We have a lot of models that were gasoline combustion with hybrid alternatives now moving over to hybrid only. For example, the Toyota Camry, the Toyota Sienna, the Crown Signia, the Toyota Land Cruiser, and the most popular all-wheel drive compact SUV, the Toyota RAV4 for 2026 is hybridized 
only. It's electrified only. You can get it in HEV and PHEV, which is plug-in hybrid. If you guys haven't seen my overview and review videos on what is to be had with the 2026 RAV4, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go back later and check it out. But this is the future for many reasons, but one most important reason is the uh, restrictions on emissions and the output of uh, certain, you know, carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxides, et cetera. The overall economy, the overall consumer, viewer, and customer is also pushing for better fuel efficiency and less stops and trips to the gas station. As you can see, everyone, basically, if you're missing or you might miss your V8 or V6 engine, the way of the future for all the reasons I just mentioned is smaller, more fuel efficient engines, whether it's a turbocharger, whether it's a, you know, hybrid electrified power plant combined with a combustion engine or just pure EV for many reasons in terms of restrictions and pollution output and fuel economy. This is the way of the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video topic discussion and review. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Let me know if you have any questions on the comment section. Take care.